Welcome, everybody, to this Monday night edition of the Ranting Ron Show. Yes, the Sabres are playing. They're up one to nothing early in the second period. That's a rarity. But, hey, you never know. It's the Flyers. So, tonight, our special guest, all the way from Rochester, if I'm right. Yes. Buffalo Plus 13 Wham radio station, Jenna Cottrell. Yes. See, you all thought it was Cottrell, didn't you? Who's <laughs> <laughs> that? So, and of course, my regular co-host, Jay Don't Fade, Jason Malloy. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be doing here. Great, Ron. All right. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited, you know. And uh, and obviously, after uh, run 830, Ted Cottrell, former defensive uh, defensive, back, defense, uh, defensive coach of the Buffalo Bills during the Super Bowl run, will be joining us. And Jenna, you're more than welcome to stay on for that, too, if you'd like. Oh, That's okay. up to you. Nice. So, uh so we'll start off with the breaking news. The Buffalo Bills have a new stadium name, Highmark Stadium. Hopefully that doesn't mean it's the Highmark of the Buffalo Bills last year, just uh, 45 minutes away from their first Super Bowl appearance in 30-plus years. So, so Jana, we're going to win a Super Bowl this year, right? <laughs> I mean, look, the Bills, are they're in a good place. They are coming off a great season, obviously. It's funny. I was thinking about like how we all felt last year heading into the draft and the biggest question – even Sean McDermott was asked before the season started, like, what keeps you up at night? And he said, Josh Allen's development. And to see now where we are after a season, to see where Josh went, the addition of Stephon Diggs, it's exciting. I mean, this is the time where the Bills are, are building, and it's going to be fun to see how they add. Score! 2 nothing, Buffalo, sorry. <laughs> Sabres are up 2 no, nothing. No, they scored again? Yes, the Buffalo Sabres are up 2 to nothing. I said they scored 5 goals against us. Tonight. Cody Deacon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Jason, you're in charge. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, Ms. Patrick, great to have you on. Thank you. So, we're going to dive into uh, a couple of topics here. Obviously, um, I think right now, uh, with the really, let's say the first, second, really free agency, all the exciting names being taken up and kind of claimed by other teams, including the Bills, uh, I think kind of the draft is starting to enter the forefront of most people's minds, at least mine. Mm -hmm. um, so, one thing I want to dive into obviously, we saw Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Matthew. We'll call him Matt. Matt Breda uh, being added a uh, running back that I love. I think personally, in my opinion, maybe a top five uh, speed running back in the league. Um, do you see the Bills targeting any more offensive weapons? And and, and more so, obviously in the draft, everybody's going to take a wide receiver, six, seventh round, maybe take a couple yeah. of drafted guys. But do you see anybody really in the early rounds that they, they'd still want to target? It's so funny because I feel like when you hear Brandon Bean talk about the draft, one of the first things he always says is it's best player available. And while I think that's definitely something that the Bills have in their minds, the one guy that really stands out in terms of the offense is a running back, obviously out of Clemson, Travis Etienne. And I think you've, you've heard Marcel out of ESPN talk about it so much. And I think because – the, the Bills have done a great job adding offensive weapons in the offseason. They've done a great job of, of continuing to build that. But I think when you look at the skill set that ETN has, his dynamic ability, and also the pass-catching ability, I think when you see someone like that, the possibility of him being around at 30. Now, do I think if he's not on the board, the Bills take a running back? Absolutely not. I do not think that's the case. I just think when you look at some of the things the Bills can add, having another dynamic playmaker in their offense, it's hard to pass that up. That being said, um, you know, I could see them, you know, another position on offense, tight end, but Kyle Pitts out of Florida is really the guy that everyone talks about. I don't, he won't be there. Um, so in terms of just offensive weapon, I could really see it being a guy like Travis Etienne because of what he brings. But that being said, and as you mentioned before, like later on in some rounds, I would absolutely not bat an eye if the Bills decided to draft another receiver or even two because, you know, Sean McDermott said when we talked to him a couple of weeks ago, like that is what has made this Bills offense really go along with Josh Allen's development. And the Bills want to keep that fastball. So I think by having the ability to continue to add pieces – but when you just look at the type of player that ETN is and what he could add to an offense, that's hard to pass up. Um, so because of that, I think it would make a really interesting case. But um, he's got to be on the board. If he's not on the board, then, you know, it, it moves to option two. And keep in mind, anyone that they do sign now doesn't mean they make the team either. So that's always something people forget. Like, you know, it doesn't yeah. mean they'll make the team. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, well, I look at, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the Breda signing, like he, I think is a great player. Like you talk about, he has that home run speed, 
but he's on a one year deal, pretty, uh, you know, it's a low cost, high reward rate if it happens type of thing. And also, I think like the bills are in this point where because of the salary cap situation this year, there are a lot of players that are out there. There are a lot of players that the bills have been able to sign on the cheap. And because of that, you have less kind of restrictions or less stipulations, really, if you want to cut them later on. But, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, when I first started covering this team, it was Rex Ryan as the coach. And, you know, we went to the combine in Indy when you could, when it was in person, you know, which shed a tear. But um, it was, you know, you'd ask prospects about Buffalo and then you'd be like, oh, what do you know about Buffalo? And they'd be like, uh, it's cold. Like they didn't know anything about the team. You know, it's right now, next to you know, Toronto down the street. Ask who yeah, the player yeah, Jay like was. They at. really didn't know much about the team. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah, I mean, it's cold there and, and wings. But now, I mean, when we went last year before all the craziness, Mike Catalan and I went there and just hearing players talk about Buffalo and the team and the success. And that was even before this past season had happened. So um, just to see the culture change and just around the league, how much the talk of the Bills has changed, it's been really fun to see. And I think. So many players now want to play in Buffalo, and that's been the biggest difference over these last couple of years. Yeah, personally, I totally, I totally agree with everything you said. I, I was definitely um, someone that really, really liked Travis Etienne. I still like Travis Etienne coming out of the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt Brady definitely swayed my opinion as to where I would go in round one. Mm-hmm. Um, my pick for round one is, is kind of been since I, I heard him give an interview, and this was only a couple of weeks ago, but before then I've been, I've been keeping an eye on him. Um, cornerback out of Syracuse, another guy. It kind of leads me to the next question. Um, mm-hmm. I want to talk about cornerback too. I think that that's a concern for a lot of people. I do personally yes. think that Levi Wallace, um, I don't want to say he took a step, but I think he was healthy last year. He was healthy to play. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's another issue. Cornerback too. What do you think about that? I think that's definitely something when you look at the strengths of this Bills defense, like when you talk about Trey White and Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, like the secondary and how set up they are really that piece that that corner number two opposite was something that the Bills struggled with. You know, Josh Norman not staying healthy, him and Levi Wallace kind of splitting reps. And while Levi Wallace has been in Buffalo for a couple of years, I think, you know, there were points where he got beat and it was pretty obvious or things like that. So I think if you were to have like a bona fide starter, I get wanting to take someone um, at 30 because there are going to be great players available, obviously. And then also when you look at it too, like being able to learn from Trey white, like what type now that he's had time in the league um, and obviously he was drafted 27th overall. So just to see a player of his caliber and what he could bring in, in the mentoring piece of that um, I think would be huge. But you talk about the, the guy out of Syracuse, like he is some, I went to Q's. So he is someone that I'm like, ooh, that would be pretty cool. Kind of having that central New York, Western New York connection uh, would be interesting to see. And, and he's someone that I definitely think could could learn from a Trey White. Yeah, definitely. I, and I, I would have uh, said his name. I'm sure you would have if I could pronounce it. Um, okay, gonna... I know how to pronounce it. I just have to look at it phonetically. <laughs> is that too Melifon Wu? It's Smith. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, his name is very hard. But at, and he's six three. He's two fifteen. So he's kind of that opposite of Trey White, who's a who's a more uh, who's a smaller guy. You could have him kind of play on the big receivers, leave the more skilled speed guys to Trey White. Like I just feel like that would be a nice kind of offset to have. And yeah, like, I mean, the bills had their struggles with that cornerback rotation because of injuries and just to have a bona fide guy take over, I think would just alleviate some of those question marks that we saw the bills have throughout the season. Real quick, because of the uh, success that Brandon beans drafting has been, he doesn't know every single one, but he sure seems to know a lot of them. Would we really be mad at anybody he picks? Just, you know, if he picks someone say, well, it's, it's going to work. I mean, can he, yeah. can he make a wrong pick in the first round? Is there a position that he picked besides punter or quarterback or kicker? If there's a position he, he picked, he said, well, why did he do that? Like, would you be stunned at a player or a uh, position? No, I actually wouldn't. I would say, you know, like Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott, what they have brought in terms of just stability and faith in the bills is something that we haven't seen in quite some time, obviously. So, and and you're not going to bat a thousand, obviously in the draft, it is tricky. You know, there's going to be players that don't always pan out. Um, but the bills have had a lot of success. And I think that speaks to kind of the culture that's already been developed that foundation, you know, trust the process, but all of that. Um, but no, I mean, I always think of 
the plan and how we see everything later. You know what I mean? Like when we were at the draft last year, we talked to Brandon Bean and he spoke about how, you know, the bills would like to draft a receiver to have someone available for, you know, as Cole Beasley and as John Brown were getting older. And then a couple weeks later, he, he did the Stefan Diggs move, but he still took, you know, Gabriel Davis and Isaiah Hodgins. So I feel like he's always, he lets you see a little bit, but of course, you know, they're, they're always trying to make moves, but because of that, I think they've earned the trust of fans. Now it's, you know, it's, it takes a lot to draft. Well, we know the bills have put a lot into their sc scouting department, but this year is a little bit weird because of the COVID seasons, a lot more tape. There's some players that had, you know, the season we know was weird in college football. So I'm curious to see how that affects scouting and how that goes because that's obviously going to play a role in things as well. Yeah, of course. No, like I, which kind of also again leads me into my next question. Um, as far as players that not only that we that you would think as far as we need, like I guess you could say selfish but players that you selfishly want to see. You know, for yourself, obviously, I'm sure uh, some Cuse members and some Orange men would be definitely high on that list. For myself, um, a Fitu Melo, yeah, yeah, back from Kazera Cuse, and then uh, also. Uh, I'd love to see Jared Patterson. I, I, I just, I love the Bulls thing. Um, yeah. I really wanted us to get Anthony Johnson a couple years ago. Now that didn't fully pan out for him, yeah. but I'd love to see a Buffalo Bowl and just see that the transition, that story. And he's a talented guy as well. So he's super talented. It's so funny. I like how many touchdowns do you have? Like eight in one game. I mean, he just, he eviscerated the Mac this year and it would be really cool to have that storyline considering he is obviously very familiar with Buffalo and Western New York and what the bills have done. And let's be real. I mean, I think the bills with the Brady signing, it kind of shows that the bills are trying to figure something out at running back, seeing what they can have in terms of their options. Um, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't say I wouldn't be surprised, but I do love those storylines. I actually kind of took this question in a different way of, of a player that I would like to see, or I'm excited to see in a, in a bills uniform. And that would be actually Matt Milano because um, going into this off season, I thought he was gone. I absolutely thought that he was not coming back to the team. And it's so hard to deny like what he means to that defense. And even just the development of Tremaine Edmonds, like he is, I feel like he is the unsung hero of that defense. And I really thought he was gone. And just to see Brandon Bean and Milano kind of maneuver their way through the contract, through the extension and have him back. He is someone that I was not expecting to come back And Daryl Williams, kind of the same thing. Like I thought they were done in, in Western New York. So to see them come back, um, I just think it's really exciting and it shows that players want to return to the bills. Yeah. They want to continue to build on what has been built. Mm -hmm. And then also it just shows that, you know, it's something special going on in Western New York. And I know that might sound cliche to some people, but if you're a bills fan, you've gone through a lot and to see players actively want to be a part of this team, that says a lot about where the group has come and like what the window now means for the future. Because, yeah, guys want to get paid, of course, but guys also want to win Super Bowls. And the yeah. fact that they are so they were so close to that last season and they believe that's in their future, I think, says so much. Yeah, a player like Milano, when uh, Bean came out and said, hey, listen, we want him back, but he earned the right to test the market. So we're, yeah. you know, he wants to whatever. And that never got that far. And I don't know if it was Bean on the side saying, hey, you know, or if Milano says, hey, I don't need to test the market, man. I'm, I'm yeah. good. I'm here. I'm here. You know, and yeah, they can go on the greener, warmer pastures for sure if they wanted to. But, you know, it's been a while since uh, a bill has left here that didn't want to be here, which is good, you know. And then, yeah, but not too long ago, uh, Cleo Mack was upset we didn't draft him when he said, oh, they, that guy took my football team. Um, we'll talk about that year. But, uh, you know, that would have always been interesting too. But, you know, I just, it's just a so good when he signed. I didn't see that. I don't think anyone didn't come back, right? Is there a player we, well, well, I mean, John Brown was up. Yeah, they were props was to stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But, yeah, but that yeah, obvious. I mean, the, the guys that I really thought were gone came back. Roberts, and, Andrew Roberts went to you New know, Texans. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's another guy. But like for the most part, I think yeah, we most saw of the caliber of players coming back. It was, and look, like Matt Milano, he's had his injuries. And obviously, you know, you don't know what that did to the market out there. The salary cap situation, you don't know how much different the money would have been if you were to leave. Um, but at the same point, this fact that he wanted to say, it's so interesting. We yeah. talked to him before the season started last year and he's like, I want to be in Buffalo. And right. like a guy says that, you know, 10 months ago and you're like, yeah, but dude, you want to get paid? 
You know, you're like, I don't blame you. I want to get paid too. And then to see the follow through of the whole situation and to see him back with the bills, that was just something I was not expecting. Cause we saw a couple years ago with Shaq Lawson and Jordan right. Phillips. As soon as they tested the market deuces, they were out, which is fine. They wanted to get their money, but, um, yeah, but yeah, just to see that is, is cool. Yeah. I have a, a quick question I'll throw at you. What was the first thing that came to your mind when we, you heard we signed who no one in the right mind, I never would have guessed. Can you guess who I'm going to talk about right now? Who oh. did we just uh, sign that I never expected? I don't Mitch know. Trubisky. Trubisky. I mean, oh, Trubisky. Okay. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Well. Um, that, Mitchell Trubisky. I'm not going to lie. I read my phone and was like, wait, what? Like, oh, I looked okay. at it and I was like, because we get text alerts from the yeah, bill. Yeah, I know. That's people message me to ask questions on the phone. So here you are. You're sitting there. And, I mean, all of a sudden, you bills uh, signed Mr. Bisky. I mean, what was going through your mind? Like, wait, what? This was a perfect example of when you talk about like, have Brandon Be has Brandon Bean earned that faith? Like, that was an example of where I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then upon thinking about, it, I'm like, wait, he's a guy that has a lot of starting experience. He has a pretty similar skill set. Obviously, not quite as athletic or big as Josh Allen, but like. You know, it was kind of like we thought Allen was on the Mitch Trubisky track a couple years ago. And obviously, huh. one derailed, one kept going. Um, yes, exactly. But um, God. but no, I think that shows. And look, Matt Barkley has meant so much to the Bills and Buffalo, but yeah. the Bills needed an upgrade. Josh is now at the point where he doesn't need that veteran guidance as much. He can be that guy in the room. Um so it makes sense. And with the addition of a 17th game to the schedule, that seems imminent. Like you want to make sure that you have that position solidified because unfortunately it's the NFL injuries do happen and you have to be prepared. Personally, I'd rather have kept Barkley and maybe let uh, Jake from state fire from go, but I trust Bean. So go ahead. Jake. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, that kind of, again, it's a nice question, but um, you know, the free agency of what we have left. I'm not sure exactly what it is we uh, we, we do have left as far as money. I'm sure it's really not much. Um, any Like you said, any sign going to happen. It's going to be a value deal or a one-year yeah. prove-it deal through the cap. Um, as far as players that I would want left, I mean, the, my one player just went off the market today. I wanted Jaron Reed really, 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 really bad uh, yeah. to the contender. Are there mm -hmm. any players that on the market that you want to see maybe sit down with the Bills and, and like, like to see come in? Um, Ryan Kerrigan is a guy that jumps out just because I feel like they still need to address um, the pass rush. And because of that, he's an older guy. Look, I, he's it's not like they're getting younger at the position, but at the same point, he's someone that's an older guy, veteran, played in Washington, four-time pro bowler. Uh, Washington just obviously it just has a stout defensive front. And because of that, you right have a lot of playing time. And so I think he wants to have a, a major role in a defense. And I think he could be an option that the bills could sign to a cheap deal. But like you said, I mean, I don't look out there anymore and be like, Oh, the bills got to get this guy or that guy. Like, I think you can kind of sit back, wait, do some scouting reports and see what holes you can fill through the draft. Um, because if guys are available now, I think there's going to be that lull in, in getting signings and you can kind of readdress later on. But, um, but no, I would say a uh, Kerrigan is someone that sticks out to me, but again, that just means I'm curious also to see what they do in terms of the draft. Yeah. Sorry right about that. I just had to make sure my kids were in bed. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's out today. I don't know if you know, I have nine kids plus one. We're adopting. So she's got to make really? sure they're in bed. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Wow. Yeah, we have nine kids. Me and my wife, my, a couple are out of the house already, you know, married and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, we have a two-year-old we're going to be adopting, uh, hopefully. Well, the procedures start in April, but it's going to take a long time. Congratulations. That's Thank so you. Exciting. Yeah. So I tried to, I Go ahead, Jay. Ron's a regular Steve Martin. Uh, <laughs> cheer by the dozen, you know, movie. No, don't get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were calling me a jerk. No, no. That's a there's a movie <laughs> called There's a movie called The Jerk by Steve Martin. Never mind. You guys oh, are younger. Right. You guys are younger. I'm in my fifties here, so you know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. About double the age there, Ron. So, yeah, but uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Kerrigan, yeah. Like, I, I, growing up, my aunt lived in Washington, so I followed the Redskins a little bit. I've mm -hmm. always liked their play. My favorite player of all time, I'm a huge diehard Bills fan. It's always going to be Sean Taylor. I love Sean okay. Taylor. The yeah. the game. But Ryan Kerrigan, another guy I think you could bring in. If you can get him on a cheap deal, he is a veteran. He's going to bring some experience. Yeah. Maybe what you tried to get out of that, not that you didn't get it out of Addison last year, but we are trying to get some consistency, a five, six sack guy. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he, like I said, I mean, he has the experience. He just, because Washington is so good, they didn't really need to rely on him as much. And I think he wants to have a bigger role in the defense wherever he goes. I know he had a visit with the Bengals. I don't think that really worked out though. Um, So I think he's still out there and I think he would be someone that the Bills could be interested in sitting down with and just getting to know him more because he seems like he would fit the culture and all of those things. But you know, like like Ron said, like Brandon Bean has earned a lot of faith. So we'll see. We'll see where he goes. All right, I'm breaking you for one second, everybody. Tonight's segment, uh, this segment with Jenna Cottrell from Thirteen Wham, is brought to you by John and Mary Subs. You gotta love John and Mary's. Hey, this week, if you want a twenty five dollar gift certificate from John and, from John and Mary's, just send me a message uh, that you watched the show tonight, and I'll put you in a drawing for twenty five dollar gift certificate. At uh, participating locations, which would be in Batavia, which would be in Attica, and of course my hometown of Alden, and you just say rant, 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 ranting Ron sent ya. And uh, tonight, Sam, today, what what's your favorite sub there, Jenna? Ooh. You order the sub right now. What would you order? Man, I love to eat, so that's a good question. Actually, as soon as you said that, I'm like, mm, I think I'm gonna get a sub for dinner. Um, I don't know. Wow, I would say this is so cheesy, but like a buffalo chicken sub, probably, All right. or an Italian mm. sub, or the roast sub beef. There you go. We'll go to buffalo chicken sub. So you a lot. <laughs> you gotta message me and say, hey, I watched the show, and the sub of the day is the buffalo chicken sub. So you do that, and you'll be in the drawing for a twenty five dollar gift certificate from John and Mary Subs. Take it away, Jay. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Jenna, that, that pretty much wraps up what I've got for you here. Um, I do appreciate you coming on and, and getting your insight here. And um, I think we seem to agree and it seems that the fan base in general agrees on a lot of these things. So um, like you said, it's a new uh, chapter here in Bill's football and hopefully it continues on with the draft. And we're all in the hope. My big hope is that we're all, I am a season ticket holder that we're all in the stands. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that it's 100%. I don't know if it will be. I mean, we're talking five months on the line. It here, will right? be. It will hopefully, be. Hopefully we're full. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, 3 nothing. <laughs> we're we're nothing. Game, we're winning this game. Hey, I said we scored five goals tonight, and people the said – The Flyers are terrible, so – They are terrible. And I yeah. said this would be – we've been both. It's 3 nothing. And so, folks, the this, uh, this streak will end tonight. So, that. we got a new – we also got a new punter. Was Borquez that bad? I mean, I didn't think he was that. He was streaky, but – So, yeah, I, it – I was kind of surprised by that, but um, I think Brandon Bean kind of alluded to the fact that maybe Bajorquez um, wanted something different than Buffalo. Um, that was just what I gathered from it. But, um, yeah, they signed Hawk, I believe is how you'd pronounce it. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see for sure. Again, like um, there's going to be a lot of fluctuations over these next couple of months, as we know. Uh, is training camp, which I'm hoping you say about like having things in person. I'm hoping that training camp will be in Rochester at St. John Fisher College. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think this year will will be better in terms of that. And I have a lot of hope that the Bills will be able to figure out how to have even more fans in the stands. You no, know, yeah. It wasn't too long ago that they used to have their training camp in Fredonia. So yes, I do know that. Yep. Yeah, and stuff like that. So and it is now four nothing. Oh nope, never mind. It's a post. But oh well. <laughs> Sorry. I've got the you know, so but um yeah, no, it was great. I think the Bills, you know, so we're gonna have 17 games. I I, I had the Bills going 12 and 5 because you sometimes just you just lose a game, you know, probably have everything wrapped up. Are you worried about the Dolphins at all? Because I'm not. I think it's our division easily. I think the Dolphins will finish um, in second, but I, I think no team in our division will have more than eight wins about the Bills. Am I really? off? Right? Okay. I, yeah, I, I think, think the Dolphins, they're I clearly all in on Tua. So I think that they've, they've made that pretty clear by the way they've addressed uh, free agency. Um, that being said, I think – I think last year was kind of an anomaly because, you know, you had two of starting out the Patriots and Cam Newton. Obviously that didn't work out looking at new England too. I feel like they have to do something at quarterback. I know Cam is back, but um, just in terms of what they go after in the draft or, or however they plan to approach it. I think knowing the way last year ended for them, they can't be satisfied with having it be Cam. Um, I think it's going to be, I mean, look, the Bills swept the division, the AFC East last year. Like, I don't think that's going to happen again, just because, you know, I think all the teams are going to get better, but um, I still think the Bills will win the AFC East. So. And maybe we'll score a touchdown in the, I guess, the Jets, because that doesn't seem like that happened last year, 18 <laughs> points. And people are like, but that was right after that uh, Josh Allen was coming off that shoulder injury. So, 
Yeah, that was that was a that was a nail biter of a game. All right, and uh, last, last question. I have again. You can stick around when uh, Ted comes out in a minute. Um, where do you think uh, the quarterback for Houston Watson ends up? Do you think he stays? I mean, he's got some stuff on his plate now that a month ago they're gonna wish they traded him then. Do you think there's a problem there? Um, I'm 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 interested to see how that does pan out because as of right now, I believe there's 19 women that have filed a suit against him. Um, so I don't know how that will proceed going forward. Um, he doesn't seem happy in Houston. He's made that abundantly clear. Uh, it's hard to have a player want to play for your team. He could always just, you know, sit out and deal with the repercussions of that. But well, you um, can sit out 10 games and then play the last six and still get paid. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, it's, it's hard though. That's like when you have a guy in your locker room who makes it very clear that he doesn't want to be there, that just ruins the entire locker room. Um, right. So how, like, how does that, that, I mean, yeah, it does, but he has reasons. I mean, he has his reasons, but boy, now he's coming off looking pretty bad. So hopefully it all works out and he does not end up in new England. So, all right. So Jen, you going to stay around? Um, my battery is actually flashing right. me on my computer. Go. So I all do right. have to go. So, while we say goodbye to Jenna Cottrell, we're going to bring in Ted Cottrell to talk about uh, his former days with the Buffalo Bills. So now we got the latter days, and we'll ask, also ask him about Do you have any questions you want to ask Ted? And then I'll ask him while he's on. Are you talking to me? Yeah. So oh. Me. Went, um, how he assesses the Bills' defense. Just what he makes, what are their strengths and weaknesses, and how he thinks they match up with the AFCs. All right, well, he can answer for you real quick. Everybody, Ted Cottrell – and Ted, this is Jenna Cottrell. Hi, Ted. Hey, we Jenna. have the same last name, but I pronounce mine a little different, which is yeah. too funny. And Jenna's from okay. 13 Wham out in Rochester. So she had one question for you before her phone dies. Okay, yeah. Okay. So my question to you is, obviously you know a bunch about defense. Where do you assess the Bills' strengths and weaknesses in terms of their defensive unit as you look towards this season? Oh, well, you know, Jenna, I um... – I've seen them a couple of times, you know, on on, on uh, the playoff games, and um, I didn't really study them that much. But I, I know that they. Uh, I've I've watched them practice. Uh, I guess it was a, a year or so ago, and they uh, those guys really play hard. They play for each other. Mm -hmm. um, they have a good def a great defensive coordinator, and and, and Leslie. Uh, Leslie Frazier, who I know quite well, and he and he's done a great job there. And you know, if you look at it, um, what I saw like near the end of the year in the playoff games, well, it's, and as they made the approach to the playoffs, the defense was really starting to gel mm -hmm. and play together. And 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 one part of the formula for advancing through the playoffs is to have a hot defense and a hot quarterback. Quarterbacks really have to be playing well in the playoffs and, and along with the defense because of field position and everything else. The weather, you know, because, you know, if you don't have an indoor stadium, you know what type of weather you're going to have, especially up in the north. Uh, Buffalo, Cleveland, Green Bay, Chicago, uh, those type of cities, you know, Kansas City even. Uh, you they get some bad weather up there. And, of course, New England. Um, so that that with that formula being – uh, like I just put out there, I thought I, I watched them. I thought they were doing really doing well, you know, because they, they the defense uh, basically won. I think the Baltimore game, you know, when they I think they ran they had a pick six near the end of the game when yep. when Baltimore the Ravens were driving and looked yep. like okay they're going to score there. I guess they're inside the ten yard line or something like that. And next yeah. thing you know, um, one of the DBs picks picks the ball off and takes it to the house, and that's the difference in. That was a huge difference in the game right there. So uh, I thought the defense really played well. Now, they may they may have to add a couple of pieces. Now, what positions, I don't know because, you know, things change so quickly nowadays. Yeah. After a couple of years, you know, three years, you have a whole new team with this uh, way the collective bargaining agreement and things have gone free agency and all. It's very difficult to keep a team together uh, for more than three years. So with that being said, I think next year is a key year for them. Uh, the quarterback, the quarterback uh, is really doing well. Uh, I think he he had a few issues near the end of the year and in the playoffs. Uh, I, I think 
So part of that formula, what I had mentioned before, the hot defense for the quarterback needs to really be kicking it, uh, uh, really getting into playing the best ball of the year at that time. And uh, and it comes with age, you know. I think it's, this is just his third year, his third year in, in the league. Going for us. Yeah, and he's right. Wait, wait a minute, you know that's that's a great job. So for most yeah. quarterbacks, it, it takes them like five, six years just to make the game slow down. And I think he's uh, he's done a great job. He has he has the arm and the uh, the movements that you need in the league. But he really has the arm to negotiate the the, the bad weather. And the winds up in uh, in the Buffalo Stadium, you know, that uh, big, big part of the year. And we always said, and to be successful in Buffalo because of the outdoor stadium, you need a quarterback that throws a tight spiral, a tight spiral that could cut through the wind. Mm -hmm. Because you gonna get those windy, you gonna get those windy days up there in that part of that part of the uh, the county, Erie County. So yeah. he, he well, has Jim owned, it. Jim owned that wind. When he was there, Jim Kelly. Yeah, well, was see, yeah, this, 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 uh, see, Ryan, the thing that both he and and, and Jim Heather is the tight spiral that could cut through the wind. You get those quarterbacks that have the little soft passes, they touch passes, they're they're timed out. They get up in that stadium, they have all kinds of issues. Yep. And we and we when I even when I was there, we, we, uh, the quarterbacks that we feared the most late in the year coming up in there, the one that really was Dan Marino. I was gonna say Dan Marino or John Elway. The, yeah, because he had the same in Elway, right? We played those guys uh, at Denver, but, but you know, uh, Miami's in our division, so we knew we were gonna have those yep. guys, and, and and we would always seem like we had them sometime in December, yep. and so. All right, well, Jenna uh, had to leave because her phone yeah. died on her. So okay, you, Jenna, she had to go. All right. Yeah, well, her phone was dying, so I, she said she, she might just end up leaving because her phone. She's on her last legs with us, but Jenna Cuttrell, thank you so much for joining us. So. <laughs> And Ted, on a different uh, yeah, so Ted, thank you so <laughs> Ted, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been, you've been, you know, you've been all over the place. You know, You're obviously coaching in Buffalo for a long. I, if I and I, I don't know if it was you. It might have thought it was you. Were you? Didn't you have a game or two when Mark Levy was sick that you were the head coach? Was that no? You? That was Elijah. That Elijah, was Elijah Pitts. Elijah Pitts. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I couldn't remember. I was really. I didn't want to look it up. I wanted to try to use my memory. But you're there, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, you were young. You were a young dude then. You were, what? Well, you were probably about no, but you know, years old, three years old. Well, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm 52, so you okay. know, you're a little bit I'm older. A little, yep, I'm a little older, but you know, I've seen oh, every. So Bills you were remember? Yeah, it was Elijah. Yeah, was, I've seen every Mark. Bills game. Yeah, see, you know, Jay here's the kid. He didn't even know that Marvin Levy had to take like two or three weeks off. So yeah, you know, Marvin had the issues in bed that. Uh, Eli took over. We call him Eli. He took over and did a great job and, and held everything together until Marv came back and all. So yep. it was it was very good. Yep, I think it was. Uh, was plus, Eli, 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 Eli was a great guy. You know, yeah. he he was uh, my lord. Uh, I bless him. He was he was quite a man. And and his son, and Ron sucks, right? Right, and a lot yeah. of people don't realize. You know, he scored the first rushing. Touchdown in the very first Super Bowl. Really? I when, he know that. Green Bay, when he was with the Packers, yeah. There you he go. scored I the first, first Russian touchdown in the Super Bowl. Was it like Tiabuda BKC? We would have been in that Super Bowl and he would have scored it against his uh, team he futurely coached. So, yeah. So, <laughs> well, you've been with the, you were with the Bills a long time ago. Um, you know, when uh, the Bills are like going to the Super Bowl on a regular basis. Um, it was you. Uh, it was Chuck Dickerson was there at the time. I'm going by memory. I did not want to look any of that up. I want yeah, to Chuck that. Dickerson was there. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Uh, it was a different kind of uh, group of coach. <laughs> Jay, there was a time. I, I know Chuck Dickerson was one, but he got into a, a fighting match with another coach. It was like crazy. But uh, that's because the Bills are so good, and they wanted just nothing but win. I mean, the Pickering Bills, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> going on. But what years were you on the Bills coaching staff? I was there from 1986 to 1990. And I went to Arizona Cardinals. Then I came back in 1995, and I was there from 95 to 2001, 2000. And uh, so I was there a total of 10 seasons. You literally Super missed Bowls. all the Super Bowls. I missed the Super Bowls. And it's then, why we um, didn't win one. It's why we didn't huh? win one. It's well, why we didn't win one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had, I've, had, I've had some of my friends say, I said, if you'd have been here, we would have won at least two of them. So that's, <laughs> that makes me feel good. 
But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was there. I, I was there ten years, total ten seasons. Yeah, and, and then really, you're, you're you're still in coaching, right? Last you last I saw, you were yeah. with the XFL Houston team. Last I saw, yeah, I was with the uh, I was with the XFL Houston team. I was a defensive coordinator, working on the June Jones, and we had the we had the number one offense and the number one defense in the league. Yeah, Chris we Miller was the offensive coordinator, right? Yeah, we were un, we were undefeated, we were five and zero. Oh. And we had the number one offense and number one defense. I was really proud of our defense with the kids. Yeah. Love it. Okay. The way our players, they came together and, and they did everything I asked them to do in a short amount of time. So, and they, we were just starting to really kick it into high gear. And when the, then the pandemic hit and we had to shut it down. But you, you get to a point where the, the players in practice, they were just having a great time. And we were, we, we were going against a, a pretty good offense. Or offense, uh, and, a, and a quarterback, you know, a quarterback went to the Carolina Panthers. Um, so he, uh, we would have a, well, they would get after it in practice. And in, in, in the last week that we, before we shut her down, we already played the New York team. And we, we intercepted our quarterback, who's the top quarterback in the league, our defense during the practice. We picked him off five times, we had five interceptions. And of course, the players are just they just jawing back and forth at each other, and, <laughs> and so it was a lot of fun. But but the thing was that the defense, the defense team, and especially the DBs and linebackers, um, they had really bought into what uh, we're trying to put in, and they understood it, and they were accountable, and and they um, they were a pleasure, uh, the coach. So that that was really good. It was just a shame that we had to shut yeah. it down. Hopefully it comes back. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do now. Oh, we do too, folks. We, we had some great fans in Houston. You know, the, I mean, they were, they were, uh, we were getting close to 30,000. And the next game coming wow. up, they had predicted 35,000. And the stadium only holds 40. We're playing That's at awesome. the University of Houston. And uh, mm. the fans were there. And, and uh, they're bringing the families because the tickets were affordable. They're very right. affordable, like 25 bucks a ticket, 20 bucks a ticket. Wow. So a family. Four could come, get four uh four tickets and pay for the parking for a hundred dollars. So that was that was that was a big deal down there because the Texans ticket, I think the cheapest Texans ticket was like hundred and twenty five dollars. So one person, you know. So I mean, wow. four, was, wow. that was that was a big that was a big tab to go to a, a Houston Texans game. Yeah. So you were here, you know. Obviously, Marvel Levy came in '86, so you and him it sounded like came at the same time. When you was okay, we saw Marv when he talked. He talked in his mm -hmm. it, the way he talked. His etiquette of talking to the media and this, and he would always, you know, use captions and you know phrases from people in history. We we knew that about Marv, so we loved about Marv. He seemed like he was just really a player's coach. On the sidelines during the game, he could you could see him get really fired up and mad, and it's like. It was kind of surprising. What kind of coach was – what was his personality really – like, if you had to say what Marv was, was he really – was he – what do you think What do you think of Marv Lieber? What do you think of him uh, when he was coaching that team? Was he really that – was he really that, that, that good? Was it his coaching or was more of he just let the players play and he was like a uh, – it, it, was, it, was, it, was it was a combination of both, you know, but it was his organization. And I was with, I was with Marv in Kansas City. He hired me when he was head coach of the Chiefs. And – and if, if you know Marv, his his personality, his demeanor throughout the week, uh, it's, it's not too bad. It's kind of even. He doesn't talk too loud, doesn't get riled up. And uh, I remember my very first game. I, 17. I'm sure you already know. I went, oh, my God. Who was this guy? It was like a complete uh, uh, turn. He went from doc, doctor. He was like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde guy. I went. Wow. And so he uh, he's yelling at officials and getting over him. I said, Oh my goodness. And and so I kind of used to it. So when he came to Buffalo, it was like the same way. But I think he, he meddled a little bit. He meddled a little bit, but he was still he was still get after uh, the officials and, yeah. and get yelling and screaming. And boy, I said when, when game time came, he, he flipped another switch and it became another different a different soul altogether. <laughs> so, but 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 I, I think he he learned a lot from Kansas, his days in Kansas City. Uh, he kind of like mellowed, and he knew 
when to get after him and when not to get after him. He would, when he got after him, they it's like you know that old commercial E.F. Hutton. Those guys would listen and then well, they would they would respond and then respond in a good way to him. So that yeah. that that uh, he he was he was a complete uh, different guy standing up talking to the players and leading the players uh, that they were used to when, when before he took over. And I was yeah. there in '86 when he came in. Um, I was hired by Hank. I was hired, yeah, I was hired by Hank Buller. And uh, middle of the season, um, Mr. Wilson let Hank go, and, and Marv, and Marv came in. And uh, you know, like you say, like what they always say, the rest is history. And one of the, yeah. one of the things I can always remember uh, was, and I, I mentioned this on another uh, show was that his very first speech, I will never forget his very first speech with the team. And uh, when he finished, all the players stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Yeah, so right that, then. That'd be great, man. You guys saw some good oh, things. That, right then, that was, that was, that was something. And, they, uh, yeah. and of course, this is history. Yeah. One thing now, as a fan, I, you know, we all have our opinions. We don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, but I looked at the players. You, you had Bruce Smith, Daryl Talley, Cornelius Bennett on the offense. You had Kelly, mm -hmm. Thurman, Reed, uh, Crisper kept for a little while. Um, you know, James Lofty came later. I always, and again, I don't know how right I am, but I always said, you know what? Marv Levy was a perfect coach for that team. I don't think, even with all that talent, no one could have kept those egos together the way Marv did. I just can't, I just, I, I believe that, but because sorry, you can see some of these players at egos because when you win, you're going to get them, which is fun, you know, Bruce and Cornelius. But I believe yeah. Marv was the right coach. I don't know if another coach could have done as well with those players. You know, you, you know what? You got a, you got a good point there, and uh, he he was he was he had the right demeanor, and, he, and for that it makes of personalities. You know, you 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 got, you got Jim on offense. You got. Uh, Andre on offense. You got Thurman on offense, and well, you know, you know, and then until later, then games come up. But, but just uh, you got you got uh, like I said, Jim, Andre, Thurman. Uh, well, that's that's a bunch right there. And then on defense, you, you get um, you get Bruce, and then you get Daryl, and then uh, Biscuit, Canius, and all, and the rest of the guys, but. They, you know, for some for some reason, those guys kind of blended together. Because you know why? I, I, I believe this to this day. Uh, when we were when we were getting ready for the draft and uh, going out scouting, and, and and you can you can see how the team was made up. It eventually, it was made up. Marv would say to us, "I want." that that player to be a good student academically a good student he didn't he didn't want to you know all oh, have an a average but make sure those guys are going to class they have some motivation about going to class and we would you know we would get to get to reading some of the athletes that are coming in are draft eligible and we're putting the board up and we've seen a couple of these guys play. Oh man, this guy, this guy is really, really good. We love to have him. And then Mark said, "What kind of student was he? What kind of student is he? That that guy did not go to class and he was in trouble academically all the time. He would tell us, we're not going to take him. We saw a lot of players that had more abilities, so-called abilities, than the Buffalo Bill guys that we did with." Some of them, wasn't that many because you know we had some good time. But there was there was yeah. a bunch of guys that were taken by other teams that Marv had already red flag. We don't want them. Yeah. We don't want them. He wanted those guys that were highly, highly, and I say this, and I say I use this today, and I'm put my new coach and instruct uh, the players, self motivated. He wanted those guys to be self-motivated because he says a coach can't be going out there yelling and screaming at this guy all the time. Say that it's a fourth down and one or they're down on a goal line and you got to stop them. He said, you can't be out there jumping in behind them and yelling and screaming at them, pumping them up 
they have to have that thing inside of them say, hey, we're going to make this stop. We're going to make this play. We're not going to let them get this first down. We're not going to let them score this touchdown. They have to want to do it themselves. He said that's the self-motivation. Yeah. And you know, you know what? And that's what we had a bunch of uh, those, those type guys. So, and, and, it, and he says, and he said this too, it makes coaching a lot easier. You know, you just got to get those guys, get them lined up and tell them what you want to do with your teams. And then they got to go do it. And, and you look at, and you look at those guys that we had, there's a lot of self-motivation. There's a lot of self-motivation in, in, in all those players that we brought in. And, and yeah, for example, yeah. look at Steve Tasker. Right. Look at Steve Tasker. Come on, you look at him and go, wait, that guy can't play. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and you go, he's what? Oh, yeah. No, get away from him. No, no, no. And that guy, play. that guy is one of the all time greats, all time yep. great special team. Could be an all of fame. And he was a hell of a wide receiver, too. Yeah. Marv would, was dead. Don't get catch him. Martin Marv would not let him play on on offense because he said it was too valuable on the special team. Yep. There's Jim, a Jim, Jim, the Rams. Jim, would, oh, Jim, would, Jim, would, Jim would just go. For, oh, coach, coach, we got to use Steve. We got to use Tasker. You know, nah, nah. <laughs> and they he we finally used him in, in his latter years. But going into uh, when 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 he found out how good Steve was on those special teams, that was it. That was it. The hit on Vernon Well, Vernon. Well, oh, Vern was so, a Ram on uh, the opening day of the 1992 season, I think it was, on a punt. And as soon as he caught it, Steve, bam! And I just see that all the time, like the hardest hit. I mean, the guy got knocked back to L.A. That's when the Rams were actually in L.A., I think. But uh, uh-huh. it was, you know, it was he was in, he was just incredible. I, You know, I'm surprised he's not coaching somewhere, but we get him on the radio here every day, so. Yeah, he's, you know. uh, yeah he's, I think he's up there doing radio, right? And, and he yep, still does he, some TV. Yep, he's working with, uh, on the radio with um, Chris Brown. Yeah, every uh, twelve to three. And by the way, uh, Derek Burrow says hello. So he's, I guess, okay. he's he come and tell you he said hello. So, so when you came back to Buffalo, you, I mm-hmm. could probably guess who your favorite two players were on the Bills defense. You called them the package. That mm-hmm. would be Tad. Let's see, Pat Williams and Ted Washington. Washington. Pat Williams and Ted Washington. Yeah, Pat yeah. Williams. We got from Minnesota, I believe, and Ted Williams. Uh, I'm sorry, Ted Washington. Ted Williams, a baseball player. Ted Was. Pat Williams. We got from Minnesota, and Ted Washington. I believe we got from Denver. And uh, Jay, I don't know if you remember those guys, but nobody. Pat Williams. No, yes, no, I remember. Nobody ran on our team. No, 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 Rod, Rod. We got, we got Pat. We got Pat Williams. Out of Texas A and M. Oh, so he was ours first, and he went to Wait Minnesota. No, no, oh. no, no, no. He went to Minnesota when I became the coordinator for the Vikings. I was up there with me. Okay. Pat Pat was Pat was a rookie out of Texas A and M. He was not even starting at Texas A and M, but we saw all the tape. We go, hey, this second team nose tackle is better than the first team. And so, Pat, that that year that of the draft we signed, Pat was the first free agent that we signed that year. After the after the draft is over, so check it out. He was at Texas A and M, and then, uh, of course, he came to camp, and then we we found out what we had to do with Pat with the uh, his his reading and his reading what we had to do with him so that he could understand things. We had to get black uh, black ink on red paper. He had some type of stigmatism in his eyes. And they oh, found that out. Oh yeah, they found that out. Then we had his his whole playbook was different than the rest of the guys, and so we we brought him along and uh, gave him a couple things to do, and uh, then we started teaming him up with Ted. And that was that became the package because they're big wrestling fans. Uh, <laughs> nobody ran on that no. team. No, 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 no. And Ted Washington. So I got the I got the thought that. Put both those guys in, both were nose tackles. I said, we could use both those guys at the same time. And now the issue was that Ted Washington is, was uh, one of the smartest football players I ever coached. 
he understood everything. Uh, he understood the defensive line. He understood the linebacker play. He understood the secondary play. And this is a, this is a defensive not a nose tackle. And he would sit in meetings, and with his surly, you know, his his snarl, you don't think he's ever listening to you. But he was picking up everything you were saying. He knew everything. Ted Washington is very, very intelligent. All right, so we we get this deal to put. I said, been using them together, and then we had Sam Coward was one of the linebackers, and and I put Sam over on the weak side oh, yeah. so that yep. he could he could always just run. And Ted was in front of him. Big Ted was in front of him and uh, protected him. And so he just let him just fly all over. The but Ted understood the coverages. See, it's a, it was a big tie-in. With, but Ted allowed Sam to with our coverage that we called. Some coverages, he would he would allow Sam to just run because uh, Ted would take care of two gaps inside. He'd take care of two gaps inside. And so Sam was behind and just could go, just flow to the ball. And Ted would just worry about the cutbacks. So, but he knew that, and he had a signal that he would get Sam. When I call a certain coverage, you run. I got the backside. You just go to the ball. I got the backside cut. And so stuff like that. And Pat was a great penetrator. And so when we used the package, Pat would be the penetrator. I would tell Pat, that ball moves, you go. You don't worry about anything. You just go. Be disruptive. Don't read anything. That ball, the only thing you read is when that ball is snapped, you try to knock that center or get into that gap and get as much penetration as you could get and be disrupted. So it worked out pretty good for us. Yeah. Now, and then I, now, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. I was going to say, 99 defense, maybe 98, 99 defense, was probably the best Bills defense ever. Even in the Super Bowl years, we had good defenses. The Blizzard defense, everything, the 88 defense was good. But mm -hmm. would you, would, the 99 defense probably had to be the best Bills defense ever. Yeah, we were number one. Yeah, we were number one in the league. And uh, we held teams. Uh, well, I tell you, I tell you uh, it was a couple years later. And this, this was kind of made me mad in a way. The Baltimore Ravens had a good defense. They said it was the best defense ever. Best defense ever. You know? They their difference between their defense and our defense was uh three three yards per game. I don't think it was even three yards per game total. They had the they were ranting and raving about them being the, the best defense ever. And we were just like nine feet behind them per game. I know, right? And so I, I was going, wow. And we never got that type of recognition that, you know. And we did. We had we had a hell of a defense, you know. And we came down to that Music City Miracle, and we should have gone I to know. the Super Bowl. I was going to ask you about that. I said, man, Rob Johnson walked off that field the winner. A lot of people say, well, Flutie was started. doesn't matter. Rob Johnson walked off that field the winner. And I want to say, yeah. No. <laughs> That ball went forward. That was illegal. I know, I know, I know. It's, I know. it's, it's, uh, it's you know, time. there's a lot about that. Uh, Jay, real quick, the story. You know the Music City Miracle. I know you know it. Sure. But the, the reason why I think it was never overturned was because of course that was a penalty, and you can't review a penalty. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, you know, just like uh, you guys heard. Obviously, I know Ted. You guys heard of the immaculate uh, reception with uh, right, right. right. That was actually right. an illegal Central. play. Yeah, it, that it was, was illegal that was play. Fine. Right, and mm -hmm. that was illegal because it hit the offensive lineman off the back, and the ball can't touch an offensive lineman first. Hit it off his back, bounce back, Franco touch. That play should have been overruled. And of course, the referee yeah. talked it over and says, "How many guards are here?" And they said, "Not enough to get you out. I'll let you return over call this." So they raised their hand mm -hmm. and gave a touchdown. But uh, all right, so you know we got a few minutes here. Last week, I had Derek Burrows on, yeah, just like I had you on. We were just talking and talking. And, um, I came across an article about him. And um, this, I don't know. Did you have a chance to see my interview with him? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I it did. got a, it got a little tough because I didn't know it was going to go that way. Me and Jay, I was a little lost for words, and anyone will tell you ranting around. Yeah, I saw lost that. Words. I saw that. And I didn't know that he was. And I'm like, and a lot, he said a lot. And if you saw, so you know, a lot was going on. It was very heartbreaking. And you know, a lot of those mafia saw it are starting to say, "Hey, what's going on here?" Um, and he contacted me later in the week and said that you actually called him and like was like, "Wow, wait, this happened." So apparently, you 
might not. You were there the night it happened. Well, I, I say everyone keeps saying the story was that it was a Monday. It was a Sunday afternoon game in Houston that we won in overtime. And I don't know why the story mm-hmm. is on a Monday night football game because it was not. It was a Sunday afternoon one o'clock game in Houston that we won forty seven mm-hmm. to forty one in overtime. But mm-hmm. you know, you see your player taken off the field like that. I mean, you know, um, you were there, right? You were still on the team, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. Mm-hmm. yeah. How, how do you deal with that as a coach? That's your guy because you're a defensive coach. That's your guy. Uh, well, uh, no, you, you, you know, football is it's a tough game. You know, you guys, it's unfortunate. Guys, guys, they're, they're going to have some injuries, but you're hoping that they're, they're never serious, you know. So, uh, because it's, it's like I keep saying, uh, our Heavenly Father did not make our bodies to play football. It was something man created. You now, if he if he would have made our bodies to play football, we would have had he would make sure that we are we had shoulders, you know, that were hard shell like a turtle, or our or, or our head was couldn't uh, cook uh, sting big blows like an elephant, you know that that type yep. of thing. But our body was not made to to uh, to play football, so those. When you get those collisions and things going on, something's going to give, and you really hope it's not serious. And so when that when that happened to Derek, um, it, it was a hush over us because we've uh, I've been involved with. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when I was at Rutgers, we had we had a couple of our players, and they had to do nothing with with the contact. They died on the football field. Oh, jeez. And, uh, and, they, and they were like 18, 18 and 19 years old. And one was the aneurysm, you know, it was a blood vessel. And we had, we, had, we had any contact. We just finished exercising, warming up. And they were running through some drills. We hadn't even had any contact at all. And people said, oh, God, they were out there beating each other. No. Uh, uh, our coach didn't believe in that anyway, but we were just doing some exercising. And he comes about, he's getting a headache. And next thing you know, he collapses. And they rushed him to the hospital. And later on that night, he died. And he was like 19 years old. And we had another fellow, the same way. Uh, it was early in practice. And uh, he collapsed. So we had, we had two fatalities. And neither one of them had any contact. So, you know, this, this game, it's, uh, it's a tough game. It's, and sometimes it's unfortunate that we'll have some incidents. <clears throat> but um, as a coach, that that was it took your breath away because you you you're hoping for, you're hoping for the best, you know that that everything's okay, and you don't want and because that is somebody that is somebody's son, that is somebody's maybe somebody's dad is somebody's brother. Yep. yep. Um, it's, it's, so you want you don't want those things. Uh, you don't want anything to happen to him. Right. Um, I used to always say growing up, uh, when I was in college, I wrote articles, and people were – I was always the one – I don't care how much a player makes. If they make this much money, make this much money. I mean, you know, when Jim Kelly signed that contract for $7 million, like the most we ever saw, and people go, oh, mm-hmm. I think they're overpaid. I will always say no. They put their lives mm-hmm. on the line for our entertainment. The money's there. Why should the owners pocket it all? They should give it to the players. That's I always I was always on the side of the players when it came to that because you know you guys are the ones putting the your lives in the line. You know you mm-hmm. guys are out there taking those hits. I mean you know Ken Hall didn't make it out. I think he was fifty three, and I don't know why he died, but I'm sure football might have been the part of that. You see uh, uh, Dennis Bird. Um, you see what happens to Derek Burrows, who you know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he's only his fourth year, and you know, and that uh, he was uh paralyzed for a while there. Um, so yeah. you, like, you know, so you see Derek on my show. What, what fellow, what happened there? That the, the, I mean, the league does the league takes care of its players. How did that slip through the cracks? I don't know, but I, I want to tell, I want to say something to uh, both you and Jay. Uh, I thought that was. A hell of a show uh, that you that guys. That was hard had. to do, man. That was so hard when he started. Yeah. I, I, was- and, I, and Jay, and Jay, and you were a youngster. I don't think you were even born, maybe when that happened. But what you said to Derek and uh, 
and, and Ron, what you guys said to him, uh, it, it, it was very heartwarming to me that this is the caring and the concern that you guys displayed for yep. him. Now, now, I'm not going to tell you, I coach with him. I was, I, 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 uh, he and I have become very close over the last, oh, oh, long, 10, 12 years, whatever. It's been a long time. And I, um, he would call me quite a bit when he's, Gary's become quite, he's a hell of a football coach, by the way. Yeah. And so he, uh, so he asked me and to come up and be a consultant at Lane College when he's a head coach. And so I, I did, I did for a year and uh, a season and uh, rather not a year. And we were in meetings and he would come in and absolutely lay down on the floor. Jeez. And you know, we're trying to talk defense and get our game plan together. He could not sit up. He would be laying on the floor with his pad, his notepad. And I would just go, oh my goodness. And so that and he told me what was going on with him. And I was saying, well, we gotta get this, we gotta get this straightened out. So I have seen him firsthand suffering. And uh, I didn't know he had all those those uh some of those problems he said and trying to get his uh compensation. I hope it gets resolved because you know, he 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 does not need to be in that type of pain. Right. And I well, he, I would say I, I wouldn't know how he would even get to practice sometimes because he never he, and he never took the day. Here's the thing. About, yeah, he, it, it would get so bad sometimes. And I would tell him, "Go sit down. Sit your butt down." <laughs> and 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 he would. And, and I said, because he, he's, he, he's out there trying to coach me, a head coach, and you could see the, the pain in his face. I said, man, go over there and sit down. We got this for you. So that happened a couple of times. But he's he's really been uh, – I hope we can get all that stuff resolved with there. Because he's quite a, he's quite a guy. And, uh, well, and, yeah, uh, reading but, all of – reading it, I'm, you know, it's sad it had to become like a lawsuit, which eventually was taken care of. But talking to him, it wasn't. It didn't seem anything to do about like the money. Yeah, he wants to, you know, he called. He wants mm -hmm. to get um, you know, he got the pants up. But it just seems like okay. How come he's not been invited back? Like, the, the seems like the Pagulas. Do they even know? It, it's real. It's you know, they, mm -hmm. they're all you know. And I don't know. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody. I mean, I'm just a guy here. You know, saying you know behind my laptop here talking to you. I mean, I have you on my show. I mean, you're look at this is like you know you're big time. And I'm like I'm nobody. But no, Darryl, you know, you're somebody. You're somebody. When we're, Darryl, we're all, we're all yeah. somebody in our heavenly father's eyes. That's right. Absolutely. Amen somebody. to that. So, yeah. Uh, but when he was on, and again, it was a show we were talking you know, the first, I don't know if you saw the whole show or just the eight minute part, but I saw the whole, I watched the whole show. Okay. You're talking obviously watched, about his bills. I watched was, the first part that was condensed, and yep. then, I, then I watched the whole thing. Yeah. And you saw after the condensed part, it went further. And I told them, I mean, you know, don't, you know, I, I, I can't, it was just so much, I was actually mind blown with some of the stuff that I'm hearing from him thinking, what? I was shocked. But I told him, he touched a lot of lives, I'm sure. And, you know, so it was never meaningless. But he really did not, to never come back, be able to come back to Buffalo. And I told him, I'd like to, I'd like to meet him. Yeah, you know, I'd like to meet you in person, be able to come back to Buffalo. Yeah. But he's hurt. And he's not, he's hurt. The way he, it's almost like you know, what do you ever do? How come you know you have all these people coming back and this and, and then he doesn't get invited? Um, the Bills wow. actually, the Buffalo Bills actually reached out. A guy, a guy wrote a story when he read, watched the video. He made a little, he made an article about it. The Bills contacted mm -hmm. him to take down the article. The Bills are going to try to get a hold of me. And I think tell me take down the and I would not have. I would not mm -hmm. have taken that down. They could have offered me a million dollars, and I would have not have taken it down. And I told Derek mm -hmm. and can Derek said, yeah, I see that. Uh, I saw the what do you call it was the uh, was taken down the article and I said and then it was uh, I think since then put back up but you know it, it just seems like something's amiss this communicate I can't believe it was missed and it, it's you know hopefully it gets rectified I mean you know I mean I'm glad he's you know doing good now as a sense of still working still I think he's still in college you know yeah he's but, a, he's after right? yeah yeah, yeah that's right he's doing good there and I hope he comes back oh, yeah. I, I would like to meet the guy but. 
you know, um, the bill, you know, the, you know, and the bills, it seemed like he called the bills and talked to like a friend of his on the team and was told by, he'll call back a minute and the lawyer calls the door for called Buffalo Bills again. So, and I did see the email that he received about not contact Bill. So that is true. Somebody asked, how do you know he's telling the truth? And I said, I seen the email. I mean, and I don't think mm-hmm. that was going to, why would he lie? I mean, you know, whatever it's, you know, Ralph Wilson, no. his owner, God bless Ralph Wilson. But he had his grudges with people, and I don't know. We don't know the story, so I don't want to say anything. But, you know, Ralph mm-hmm. just had his moments. I mean, uh, Hank Stram, I think, was one of them at one time. Was it Hank Stram? One of them. Um, going back to the 60s. But it, it just seemed – it was sad that, you know, a Buffalo Bill was taken off the field to never play again. And years later, I'm finding out, like, he wasn't taken care of by the NFL, by nothing, and he's been in all his pain. So it sucks. It, it, it does suck. And hopefully – you know, he seems like he doesn't want the attention and he seems to be very, you know, he doesn't want he doesn't, the money on like that. It's all about just, he, does, he just doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't understand why yeah. he's been treated like this all this time. Well, I, I hope, like you said, Ryan, I hope that it gets resolved because, uh, you know, Buffalo, uh, the organization, and the team, they've always been one. Uh, that's taken care. They've been concerned about the players, and, and uh, especially the ones that you know, the, the retired players and the current players and retired players, how they're doing. Always been welcoming them back, you know, because uh, it, it's Buffalo is different. You know? I I, uh, I had chances to leave uh, when I came back in ninety ninety five. I had you know, offers to go elsewhere. But I said I got I got to go back to Buffalo, um, unfinished business. Plus, there's the people there are, are you know they they they're, they're fans. They 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 want they want for the team. They want the best for the team. And once and once they accept you in Buffalo, they got you for life. Yeah, you know, you're, you're you're Buffalo Bill. You're you're Buffalonian for life. Uh, when I became coordinator, you know, first few games kind of shaky. I'm gonna tell you. But but and I, but once we got rolling, and and uh, they, they knew that things were really going good, they uh, they just ex- accepted me with open arms. Uh, had a lot of good a lot of good memories in Buffalo, and matter of fact, I, I go back. I try to go back at least once or twice a year. I go back to uh, my dear friend Ilio uh, uh, Dennis DePaulo. Yeah, uh, I was president his golf yeah, tournament. Hard, then I then I try to go uh, hit a game or two, at least one game a year at the stadium. And, uh, and during when when I go up to uh, to the golf tournament, and, and we always have that in June. This is the same time that their OTAs, the Bills OTAs, are going on. So I get a chance to go over there and watch the practices and also. But but Leslie invites me over. Leslie Fraser, I go over. Yeah. And spend a day with them, so you know, you know, I got I got that Buffalo thing in my heart. And when I heard about Derek, the thing when I asked, because I was, hey man, when you going back to a game, just like you did, Ron, you going back to a game? And then he starts, he gave me that look. I go, what's wrong with you? He said, we'll talk later. This is this is no one of our staff meetings. I went, okay. And then he told me what was going on. And, and I went, wow. And now, uh, because I was talking about, hey, man, you need to come up there and, and, and go to the game and see Daryl and Bruce and, and, and Aaron and Andre and all the guys, you, you know, Pete Metz, Flores, and guys he played with back there in the 80s, the late 80s, you know, and and he, Fred, Smerlis, and all, and he, you know. Leonard Smith, uh, Rodney well, Bellinger. Yeah. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, so Rodney. I saw those Rodney. Two, uh, those yeah, two yeah. reached out to him this past week, Rodney Bellinger and uh, Leonard Smith. And I, Leonard. I don't know why I asked. I asked him. I said, "Did, did Leonard Smith ever? Did he, Leonard Smith is the one who made the crucial hit. I hope he never blamed himself because I know you know you could, no one would ever blame a player, but I bet it had to be hard on Leonard Smith. And he told Leonard did. Yeah. Leonard took it hard, and he told he told Leonard Derek said told Leonard, hey, you know, I mean, it's says football play. You don't ever. It's not your fault. So. Mm-hmm. I, I hope he does. I hope he comes back. I hope I hope he comes back for dad. Like you know, next time you're in Buffalo, you know, you gotta hit me up. We'll do this show live. I go out, me and Jay, we take this on the road once in a while, and you know, mm-hmm. maybe 
Doc, you know, because Derek, you know, uh, his the title of the article that I found was uh, "Race from History," and he's not because when Randy Ron finds you, you're not erased. And I, not erased. But he made it. Yeah. He was that was a tough show last week, and I thought I almost mm-hmm. regretted asking him some of these questions after. I'm like, oh, what did I do? But it brought it to light, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. It brought it brought it to light, and. And he's and he was speaking from his heart, and, and you could see it, and the uh, like the anguish that he he has, and then, like I said, I see I've been there and with him, and uh, recently, and seeing how he's in pain, and something has to be done with that. You know, he he, he can't he can't go on. he can't go he can't go on like that. You know, he can't go on. Well, maybe you, just, make, maybe you can make a phone call. You know, Jay, do you want to add anything to this? You've been quiet there for a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. Uh, so you Jay, know, has, Jay hasn't said a word. But oh, yeah, but you guys, uh, shut it up. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I, I, I was, I, I didn't even know, honestly, Ron, about the, been kind of honestly having some family stuff going on, but didn't even know about the article that it came out, you know, prior to our, well, not prior to, after uh, following our, you know, the video and the interview with Derek and, uh, you know, I, I guess it's not, it's not the reaction we would have hoped for. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't want the the team or the ownership, not the ownership, but the team, to to reach out. Obviously, they don't want any bad publicity, but I mean, they got to realize where they are. You know, we're a different kind of fan base. You know, we we uh-huh. create charity funds for people that troll our team and say how terrible ball flow is, and we we donate to you know their their charity of. Uh, of, of favorite their favorite charity at that point so yeah, mock us and we take care of their it's, it's amazing <laughs> it's a different kind of different kind of team and to be able to get the support that you get from us on a weekly daily hourly minutely basis you know a minute basis mm-hmm. i think they need to show that that uh you know and i love my bills obviously you know i got season tickets right um mm-hmm. all that stuff but i would like to see uh you know derek being taken care of because he seemed like a genuine guy you know like you said he's not he's he's even like he said he's not down and out you know he's an athletic director at a program have been really following up on it more since we talked to him and he is a hell of a coach and you know he was a hell of a coach and uh you know you just like to see guys like that taking care of people that give back to the game you know that that so freely gave to them so when yeah. i read the article the article was 10 years old i'm thinking he's gonna say oh no it's been cleared up it's good I'm thinking it's been, even then it would have been still 20 years later but when he said no nothing and he, you know he started cheering up on my show i'm like oh I, what am i doing i mean I'm, I'm bringing up some bad memories for this guy but you know he yeah, you know, but and then um, it's it's just ironic, you know, that it was him, you know, coming out and then you know telling. He was actually texting me later in the week saying, "Hey, Ron, I really appreciate being on." You know, Rodney Bellinger and um, Leonard Smith and Ted Cottrell. You know, it's you know he goes and here here's Ted Cottrell's number. Get him on your show. I'm like, okay. Of course, you texted me. Oh, Jay, your day texts me. I'm on my way home from Syracuse. He goes. Hey Ron, I'll give you a call in the morning, Ted. And I'm like, Ted, who? You know, I what? Hey, I hey, totally hey, forgot. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Jay, he nicks me. He nicks me. <laughs> no, I get a lot of jokes what calls. Is, what is this? Call, you know, Come on. wait a minute. Uh-huh. You're Mr. Control to me, though. I just, but hey, I realized right away, though. I realized hey, hey, Jay, right. not too many people, not too many people have my number, Jay. And so when I get him, I think the guy knows who the hell I am, right? So I, I, I answer back. He goes, "Who is this? Ted? Who?" Ted. <laughs> I'm like, Ted. Who? Like, oh wait, Ted Cottrell. I run away, caught me because you know you get jumped. <laughs> like, I get, you know, well, I get, was, yeah. And I'm here, I'm like, funny. you know, and I didn't have your name, your number in my thing yet. Now you are in. So when it says, it, okay, I'm in. Yeah, I made your you list. Now. You're in my. I yet. made your list, good, Ron. <laughs> Yes, you did. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I really, I really appreciate you being on. You know, and um, like I said, hopefully, you know, you know, when you get, you know, I've had. Let's see. I don't know if these guys. If you co any of these guys, but uh, shit, who do we have? Who do we have on? We had um, uh, Jerry Ostrowski on. That was much, you know. Later I know Jerry. 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 Yeah. You, you would have called, yeah, well, Jerry you been, uh, Ruben you, Brown. Yeah, you wouldn't have coached. Ruben, yeah, but no, Ruben, Ruben, Ruben's one of my one of my guys. Yep, yeah, Ruben Brown. Offensive guard for us. And that's uh, three two. And um also John Fina. So oh, you know, John. I have, mm-hmm. yep. So I had him on, you know, of course a lot of our you know, in sabers and stuff like that. So it's a fun show to do. But um 
Sometimes it takes. I tell you, I tell you, a guy, you should have on. Uh, have you had Phil Hansen on? No, not yet. No. Get a hold. Not yet. It's hard to get, get a hold of guys. It's hard to get a hold of people. I know, I know. You can get a hold. Of, somehow I'll get a hold of Phil. Yeah, and, and, you get a hold of these guys and says, "Hey, you got to go on this ranty run." So he's pretty good, but he might make you cry. No, um, like I said, well, Phil, time, Phil, Phil was quite a guy, you know. Yeah. He uh, he was a second. He played Smith. He played along. He played opposite. He played on the other side, away from Bruce. Yep. For all those years, but he 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 uh, he told me a guy could really perform, and it was highly self motivated, like Marv said, Coach Shalibi. Uh, those the type of guys that Phil Hansen was a pleasure to, to be around. Yeah. And Shane Collin was another one. Shane was the same way. Yeah. Uh, I got, we, they, they all of them, you know, and uh, you know, Daryl, uh, uh, Sam Cowart, Sam Rogers, Marlo Perry. Uh, he's Herbie still in Jack. No, and, uh, who's the guy with the double helmet? The defensive back. Oh, that, that was Mark Kelso. Yeah, Mark Kelso. How that was Mark. Mm -hmm. Mark Kelso. I, was it Kirby Jackson on the team then? I don't remember. Or am I going to? I can't remember what year he was on. Remember, you should get Kurt. Yeah. Kurt Schultz is still up there. Kurt yeah, Schultz yeah. is still up there. Right? And it's been, like I said, I've seen since 1980, man. It's just, it's just, you know, I got a lot of football in my head, but, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, we, had, we, had some, we had a bunch of guys still up there that I was with, you know, uh, doing good for themselves like david white david's down there i think he's a dean or something down at fredonia state okay and, uh, there's a yeah, lot of linebackers you guys, you, go to fredonia. you guys practice at fredonia yeah we just went out this practice and then we ended up at uh, st john fisher yeah, the last couple uh, there, yeah. Just, was there, uh, which was, yeah. which was uh, fantastic yeah. fredonia was good too so we, we had some good training yeah you know and Whatever you just had to go away for a while and get away from everything and get ready for the season. Yeah, and get away. Right. And then of course, you know. But, all right. Well, it was really good having you on. Um, you know, it was you know, and thank you for talking about Derek. I wasn't sure if I want to bring it up. I figured we'll bring a little bit because you were there when the night, the day it happened. He's a night. But, yeah, uh, and, and I and I know the man, so he's. Yep. Uh, I want to get you both on here at the same time. Uh, I'll get you both on here. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, we get us both on. Yeah, yeah. I, I asked him, I said, do I come on? Do you want to join us for a little bit? He goes, nah, let's head to have the fun with you guys like I did. I said, okay, we'll have Oh, yeah, we have. We, I went and I got, I got it. We got a couple of fun stories I can tell you about Derek, too. All right, so, well, we'll do that tonight when we get him we'll on. Hold that, we'll hold on to that one. Yeah. I would bring him up for him. Every now and then I would bring him up during our meetings up there at Lane College. And he was going, oh, Lord. He, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, so, then he'd walk away and say, I'm in pain, I gotta go. No. Uh, <laughs> 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 they're just saying, you know, but uh yeah, hey, hey, if you got you know all those old guys, if you want to send them anyone my way, that would be great, you know. And uh I will. I'll come, back say, to, I'll go, I'll go. come back to the bills. Hey, I'll right. go to the, uh I'll go to my list run and I'll know who they are, not like you did with me. Oh <laughs> Not fair. Oh, look at this. I'm getting killed there by technical. I go to the, I go to the list. I go to the list and say, who is this? Phil who? Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, Can't my. let you forget it, buddy. Can't let you forget it. All right, CJ, CJ, that's just, you know. This is what I, you know, I, I usually know. But hey, come on, I came right back to you seconds later. Yes, like, you oh, did. Yes, you I was. It was my wife's birthday. We were out late. We were in Syracuse. I got, you know, I have nine kids. Plus, we have a son we're gonna adopt. So we had to get away. And whatever time I was there, I'll call you in the morning. And um, by the way, you didn't call me for three days. Just saying. <laughs> and um, you won't tell you why should I call this guy? I didn't even know who the hell I am. <laughs> But no, I do appreciate you getting back to me. I'm glad we got this. Okay, and, uh, yeah, you know, and anyone you guys, you know, and um, you know, so it's off. Maybe when next time you're in Buffalo, seriously, look, you got my number, and I got you in my roll of okay. my phone now. So you come to Buffalo, we, I'll buy, I'll buy you dinner. I'll take you to John no, and Mary's, yeah. or I'll take you. No, you don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that because when I come to Buffalo, I've got dinner taken care of pretty good. You know. All right, oh, so, oh, Ilios, Ilios, I'm sure. So. Oh, uh, I got a couple other places. I got a couple right. other places that, that, that right. they, they. Are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? No, or no Facebook. No, I don't. Facebook? I don't. No, I don't do any of those things. Okay, so uh, you want to say anything to the Buffalo Bills fans before I let you go? Well, I tell you what. Um, the Buffalo Bill fans are in 
to me, they're not some of the best. They're the best in the country because of what they've done and their dedication to the team, their love for the team. And they and, they, and they're there. Uh, I mean, I remember they were there when we were terrible back in the first part of 86. And then they yeah, back in never, gave up. They never gave up. And then we, uh, we started going. And then everything, those fans, they live and die with the Bills. You know, and the Bills are so important to that that whole community up there, and so it's one of it's one of the best fan bases, if not the best fan bases in the country. All right, so for that you know, you hear about Green Bay and this. That's come on, and, and Pittsburgh said they can't they can't touch Buffalo. So the the love and the commitment the Buffalo Bill fans have for their team. Yep, we know. The last couple of years since the Bills turned around, you know, and uh, Sean McDermott reminds me a lot of Levy, just things he says, like, be the best version of yourself and stuff. Like, it's just something about certain coaches, but uh, it's been fun again, you know, and uh, hopefully someday we'll win. But so when you're in Buffalo next time, you guys are around, come to Buffalo, meet me here, and we'll do a live show. I'll bring my family we'll day down there. Okay. Try, to, try to bring Derek with you because, you know, uh, he. You know, I know he wants to come back, but he's hurting, and uh, that's our—that's he's one of our brothers. He's one of the Bills Mafia. We're all Bills Mafia, so. Yeah, right. I'll be there. I'll be there in around June, June the twelfth, for the uh, tournament, the golf tournament. They're uh, gonna have I'll, it. Yeah, I think so. So far, we're gonna. Okay. So go, right. Dennis. I talked to him the other day, and and I'm the fans there, but he lost his mom last week. Oh, okay. Uh, he lost his mother Ethel, so. All, right. all our prayers. Like him or his name. So, all right. Anyway, all right. I'll let Thank you know. You yep, absolutely. Uh, if you want to stick around for a second, we'll do our ending here and then we'll say goodbye. Everybody, this has been the Ranting Around Show. My co host, Jay Don't Fade, but he seemed to leave us a few times tonight on his computer. So maybe <laughs> yeah, right. some uh, technical issues. I know. <laughs> and of course, uh, Bill's former defensive coordinator, Ted Cottrell. And earlier in the show, the first half, if you missed it, we had Jenna Cottrell from 13 Wham. Everybody. We'll see you on Wednesday night when we talk about Sabres hockey. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.